Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we met the clay conductor in London and recruited them. They're one of our first officers now. And we also did a bunch of stuff in London with a repentant devil, finding the, I think it was the Baroness of Hell or something like that, using the Immaculate Souls. And for this episode, I want to head over back to the, the Avid Horizon and the Most Serene Mausoleum, because I want to turn in some prospects. And also the clay conductor has some stuff to do at the mausoleum. And I can finish the quest where I need to let one of the three people to uh, through the home bureau to come into Albion properly. And I want to finish that now that I've spoken with all the three people. I want to let the courtier through. By the way, quick correction. Uh, I came upon the Throne of Hours for the first time in the last episode, and I thought it might be the Clockwork Sun, because it was very round and at the very center of this whole place. Which feels like an appropriate place for it, but no, that that is not. The Throne of Hours is just the Throne of Hours. It's not the Clockwork Sun. Which makes sense in hindsight for a couple reasons. One, I mean, it'd be a bit brighter, wouldn't it? Yeah. Also, it's probably its whole a whole own port thing. Plus, I have a prospect to deliver. Um, enough tea to fuel the sun. It says the Clockwork Sun is east northeast of London. So, like, around here. Yeah. If you're weird background noise, by the way, it sounds like there's somebody doing construction on the floor above me. Anyway, before I head up north, um, there's some business I want to take care of at Perdurance, so I'll meet you back there. Should I fight this dreadnought? Hmm. Ooh, ah, oh, damn it, too close. Ow, 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 no, let's not fight it. Shit, it's so close. Oh, I'm gonna take a lot of shots here. Fuck. Hey, Starman Explorer! Ah! Please fight each other, not me. Fucking hell. There's something else down here. Uh, it didn't quite aggro. Good. Alright, at Perdurance. Uh, before anything else, let's get a poor report. I think that's all the story stuff we can really do here, unless I want to spend another day, which I don't just yet. Okay, so... I think I'm going to take the aunt. So I've had even more people telling me I should take them, and they gave me a couple little hints about why, which finally convinced me. Apparently their quest goes into a, a place that's going to be pretty interesting for Elizabeth's character, and the way that I'm playing her in particular. Also, somebody said that maybe they're not actually my aunt and it's just a, a code name. I don't think they were speculating. I think they actually knew that they're not actually my aunt or something. It sounds interesting. It really does. But of course, Elizabeth doesn't know that it's not their aunt. Although, actually, if you look at the description, I think it says, Is she even your real aunt? Either way, you'll have to deal with her. So, even Elizabeth doesn't... Not that they suspect that she's a fake or something, but... They don't know who the hell she is. So, I'm going to take them, and I'm going to say that Elizabeth is, well, remember, Elizabeth ran away from her family. She does not like them at all. She ran away when she was 18 and got as far away from London as possible, signing up on the first ship that she could, going along with the earnest agitator. Her family disgusts her. She doesn't actually know this person, right? She's not even sure that they're my real aunt. So they don't know anything in particular about this person, but if they're part of her family, and I mean, they certainly look the part of a very rich asshole, they're going to assume, Elizabeth assumes that they're an asshole, but doesn't actually know him. And I'm going to say that Elizabeth finds it amusing that somebody from her family, her very rich family, is relying, needs her help. Because that's the implication here. She doesn't really come out and say it, but... Um, I've quite exhausted my possibilities here, and I'm a serviceable quartermaster. So it sounds like they basically need us, right? They don't have anything more they can do here. I'll work aboard your ship. So Elizabeth is amused, like, okay, you need me? Sure. 
employ your aunt as your quartermaster. I'm going to ignore this description that says filial piety demands as much. It does not. It does not at all, and that's not why Elizabeth is doing it. She smiles with sincere delight. Here, take my bag. Her bag is very heavy. And my hat. Her hat is also very heavy. Your crew are alarmed when she boards your engine. Their alarm only increases when she begins to pass comment. After a thorough survey of your locomotive, she graces you with a smile. There's work to be done. She has extracted gossip from you before she's even boarded. This woman is skilled. Lost a savage secret. <laughs> Recruited the inconvenient aunt. Let's see if we can talk with them right now. Oh, right. I forgot that they are the only quartermaster I have. So, six iron, two mirrors, one affiliation with establishment, which I don't like that. Elizabeth is not an establishment person, but I don't I don't think affiliation hurts you. As far as I know, God, it might. As far as I know, though, affiliation is only used for skill checks. Like, this opportunity was unlocked because you had two association with villainy, that sort of thing. I don't think it shuts you out of anything. And we also have plus one aunt's advice. Cool. I guess. She's taken over one of your nicer cabins, which she has ruthlessly redecorated. There is a preponderance of ugly ornaments balanced precariously on tiny tables. <laughs> uh, hideous... A what is that word? Hideous antimacassars? Antimacassars adorn every available surface. Your aunt occupies a felt armchair in the center of the horror, where she spends her time either knitting or solving truly mind-boggling cryptic crosswords. Okay, so that word, anti macassars or however pronounced, apparently it's pronounced uh, anti macassa I guess like a silent R. Here's the pronunciation thing. anti macassa anti macassa It's a piece of cloth put over the back of a chair to protect it from grease and, dorn and dirt, or as an ornament. Ah! Very unfamiliar word for a very familiar thing. Right. It's like those pieces of cloths that you see... Um, like I've seen them a lot on, on like airplanes and um, trains and stuff like that where they put like a little thing around where your head is to I guess protect the chair from getting kind of greasy or whatever something that they could just wash or sometimes is even disposable I think anti macassa so hideous anti macassas adorn every available surface <laughs> converse with your inconvenient aunt I need a tale of terror to do that I'm rather busy she insists Perhaps if you tell her something ghoulish, she'll pay attention to you. An evening's entertainment. Good lord, are you alright? She immediately bakes you a batch of scones. She doesn't even comment on the order in which you apply the jam and the cream. I know what will cheer you up, she says briskly. I've been invited to a little soiree by Bunty. She pauses. An old school friend. I think she's head of the deniable constables now. You'll come with me, won't you? It'll take your mind off things. She considers for a moment. I must warn you, it's a very particular evening. Old enmities put aside. That sort of thing. It's at Carillon. Old enmities put aside. Yeah, enmity is a state or feeling of active opposition or hostility. So put old wounds aside for the meeting. Hmm. Well, Elizabeth is certainly not going to do that. Oh, that could be quite fun. It's at Carillon. That's going to have to wait a while. See what your aunt is up to. A smell of baking wafts through your locomotive. Uninvited. It emerges that your aunt is holding a tea party for those of your crew plagued with bad dreams. You're not invited. It's nothing personal, dear. They just won't feel able to speak freely if their captain can hear. They know they can always trust auntie to keep a secret. She closes the door. Yeah, I think I need to send out like a memo to the crew. Do not trust the inconvenient aunt that we've known for all of like a day to keep your secrets. Who is probably not even my real aunt. Anyway, that's the biggest reason that I came to Perdurance, but there's another one too. I have a prospect for literature. 
for the Avid Horizon, which is where I was going to go anyway for a quest. So I need three consignments of literature. This place exports it. It isn't a bargain. It's just normal price. So I don't think I'm going to... Like, I could buy as much as I can hold and take it all back and store it, but I don't want to do that. Not when it's this expensive. It's only worth buying, I think, if it's for a prospect. So I'll just get the three. And head back through the 20 ships on the way back to London and hope I don't get hit by them again. Listen to all the sound of gunfire around me. It's coming from two different directions. There's something really funny about the fact that this magical place where nobody ages and spends the perfect day in luxury again and again, made only for the most exclusive and rich at Perdurance. There's something really funny about the fact that that's here, and then, like, just probably within sight, just look out the window, and then there's just gunfights between dreadnoughts and star-maddened explorers and whatnot right outside. Not that they care. I'm pretty sure the windows were blocked out for the most part, weren't they? Ooh, this is tempting. Never mind, never mind, it's not tempting. I was gonna go for the Starman Explorer, but not the Dreadnought. Oh god, now, now there's fucking four of them. Two Dreadnoughts, two Starman Explorers. No, I'm good. Ooh, I do want to fire into that mess of ships, though. That was fun. Hmm, this Dreadnought's waiting for me here again. It's kind of a little bit too close for comfort. I think I might try to take it out, because it's very close to London. Let's get a good distance. HML, Heart of Jade. Not a good place to be. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, that was bad. Got stuck against there and took every damn shot. Took the navigation suite. Chart name plates, master stamp permit. That's gonna cost a bit to repair. Heading to the mausoleum now, fully repaired, and turning my port report, bringing all the stuff I need with me to do the prospects. I'm not going to cut this part out, because I'm actually going to cut through here and see a little bit of this unexplored area. I think it found this back here. If you're wondering why I have two damage, it's because I bumped into something. Whoops. Dreadnought. Oh god. The fuck is that? Another ministry stamped uh permit. I was gonna say ministry stamped torment. <laughs> right, so this horror is the dead sun, right? But what the fuck is this? Also, I keep hearing creepy whisperings. You hear that? Like spirits calling out to me.
Jesus. What is that? Oh, it's push- oh, it's pushing me away! Could I overcome its force if I wanted to? The storm that speaks, your crew stop their ears against the voices on the wind as numberless as locusts. The storm that speaks? Is that related to this horror at all? Whoa, why am I getting so close to it? Do I want to fly into a storm that speaks? Like, I'm curious. I want to check this stuff out, but also... It just feels unnecessarily dangerous. I think I'll wait. Maybe it'll come up in a quest or something. Yeah, it's pushing me away pretty hard. Yeah, here's the still cooling corpse of the sun. It's funny, I went right by this huge raging speaking storm and never noticed it. Unless it comes and goes, it's possible. Uh, let's not fight another dreadnought. we have a little bit of a prospect to turn in. Yeah, gemstones. I only have one cask, but oh my god, 475 per cask. And they need five in total. If I supplied four, that'd be about 2,000, so about 2,500 if I turned in all five. Not to mention whatever they give me for the bonus if I turn in them all. Holy crap. Unlocked because I have affiliation Bohemia. Oh, might as well buy these all, right? Bargains are bargains. Right, so the clay conductor had something to do here. I think they heard that there was another clay person here. Oh, let's get a port report. Search for a clay man. Clay conductor seeks a new singing partner. High in her renewed majesty's favor. The most serene mausoleum is full of mourners, tourists, and aristocrats seeking to reconcile themselves with death one way or another. The clay men are conspicuous in their absence. The clay conductor lumbers gloomily among the mourners, searching fruitlessly for someone who resembles himself. Eventually, the cheery registrar appears. I'm sorry, she tells you. Your friend is making people miserable. You explain your situation and she relents. After a brief consideration of those interred in the mausoleum, she suggests that you seek an audience with the engraved mourner, a man of polished marble. He is one of the Deathless. You will need to gain favor of the Deathless through meeting them in the mausoleum before you can arrange an audience with the engraved mourner. Right. How do I do that again? Oh, I can contemplate the dead sun. If I remember right, that gave me terror. Let's do it again. Yay. So we've already seen this, but gives us a vision of the heavens. The heavens terrify us. I, I said that sort of as a joke, the heavens terrify us. We gain a vision of heaven and increase our terror, but no, that really how it, that's, that's really how it is in this world. The heavens, I mean, words like sun and light and the heavens and things that we associate with, with good things are not really good things here generally. Let's approach the Deathless. Speak with the engraved mourner, 45% chance of success. Is the difference between speak with the engraved mother, a mourner rather, or consult with the engraved mourner, which we can't do because I don't have any favor. Hmm. Yeah, I needed 
Mystery approved literature, which I have. No, there's something I needed to like try to gain their favor. What was it? Something that I could like spend. Well, let's do the only thing we can do. Hey, nice. A man all of marble. The mourner is a vision in white. A clay man. His skin is alabaster. His curls are spectral. His thin winding sheet pallid. Candlelight dances on the polished marble. Unlike the other courtiers, the footmen pay him no heed. Today he is testing the integrity of the knave's vaults. He notices your gaze and requests you hold a ladder made of reinforced steel for him, as he needs to reach the top of the pillar besides you. If I fell, I chatter, he says, before mounting the ladder. It sways with the weight of him, but your grip is steady. He rewards you with a dazzling smile on his descent some time later. I wonder... <laughs> I'm sure this wouldn't happen, but I wonder if you failed this encounter, if all this would be the same, except your grip on the ladder is not good, and they fall and shatter. <laughs> hmm... A hush descends on the nave. The dismal chamberlain is making his rounds. And you've gained some favor. And more terror. Now we can do some stuff. Let's consult the engraved mourner. Man of alabaster and marble, cold and ancient as an antique statue. Might he have interest in the clay choirs? A courtesy. The engraved mourner consents to a meeting in his many pillared chambers. You sit on couches of blue stone and drink wine in ivory cups. The conductor hunches, his form far heavier than the furniture can support, while the mourner reclines elegantly upon his divan. divan? After polite introductions, the conductor demands, Why do you look different? The mourner smiles. I was built for a purpose, to guide, to shepherd, to travel. It was deemed I should be pleasing to the eye and ear. Now, you wanted to hear me sing? His singing is somber and cold and sad. The clay conductor shakes his head. No good. Too much like the sky. You make your excuses. So they can't just be a good singer, they have to be the right sort of singer for the choir. Of course, makes sense. I've lost favor, oh no. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of rude. Ah, oh, right, I can make a donation. Let's do that. Yeah. Wait, no. That needs Ministry Approved Literature. Then I wouldn't be able to completely fulfill my prospect at the Avid Horizon. Let's not do that. We'll come back. Let's speak with the clay conductor. Ask the conductor why he was so rude. He's defective. Plain to hear, no wonder he lives surrounded by humans. If they only knew true clay music, the conductor grimaces. He directs your attention to a crumpled brochure. It's for Magdalene's house of small comfort in the reach. Any company the weary skyfarer needs we shall provide. Anyone... Anyone you can think of, those of a rubbery persuasion, the company of the dead, even clay company. The conductor taps the page. We shall see. Can we? I'm gathering many reasons to go back to the Reach. Not going to do it just yet, but yeah, there's going to be quite a bit to do. You can rid yourself of the clay conductor. This will reduce terror. It's irreversible. Consider waiting until your hold isn't full, lest you be overburdened by needing to store anything he leaves behind. What might he leave behind? Odd. Uh, well, I think that's it. I don't need any more supplies or anything. Let's head on over to the Avid Horizon. Or more accurately, the Home Bureau. Actually, let's cut through this little dark patch here. So yeah, I won't cut here either. Want to explore all these little bits. Oh, oh yeah. No, I can't go out that way. Wait, I... Can I go out that way? Wait, actually, I can, I think. No. No, you can't. 
There's a little bit of an overhang. <laughs> There's a little bit of an overhang right there. But you can't go through. <clears throat> Had to try. Right? Oh, God. Oh, Glorious Dreadnought. No. No. HML Hippopotamus. Powerful name. Oh, God, another one. Fucking hell. Uh. Ugh. Shit. Oh, hey. Thank you. Some treasure over there. I'll leave that. Actually, that's so close, isn't it? Let's go get it. If I can... Get it. Wonder what weapon they were using. I think that was a Star Madden Explorer, and it seemed like a very big rocket. I'm used to them having blunderbuss type weapons, not rockets. Oh hey! I was so distracted by fighting that thing, I didn't even see what I got. Loot the hold. Intriguingly bulging sack. You know, this sentence out of context sounds a little bit bad. You know, knowing that you're looking for uh, loot inside of the hold of a ship that you just destroyed. It's like, okay, yeah, intriguingly bulging sack, let's check it out. But out of context, you might think you're staring at somebody and then you're thinking, hmm, that's an intriguingly bulging sack. And then it means a whole different thing. Two jumbles of undistinguished souls. A stoppered vial falls out of the sack after sufficient shaking. A collection of gathered disappointments that someone might be willing to pay for. That's so sad, the idea of souls just being disappointing. It's like your very essence, the thing that makes you you is... It's boring, it's not enough. Let's go check out this little cloud of black. I want to scour almost every little part of the map because I don't want to miss anything like a talking storm. Oh, I think I see candle wind up there. Ahead, the wreckage of old ships, derelict machinery, and abandoned buildings spackle the sky. The machinery of London fallen silent. The scent of rancid meat fills your engine, the candle wind howls. Come on, let's not get into a fight. We both got bigger things to deal with. Or not. This green look of this sea, the sea under the sky, just always reminds me of Sunless Sea so much, because so much of that game was this green color. The repentant devil stamps around the locomotive, hold on, that was pretty funny. Stamps around the locomotive, draped in stolen coats, hell is warmer. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take you out. It. 
the inconvenient aunt shivers. Wrap up warm, dear. You'll catch your death. Barrel of unseasoned hours. Let's get a port report. Let's turn in the prospect. Not going to be worth a huge amount of money, but decent. It surprises me when I look at how much money I have, because I forgot for a second that I bought the Charlotte Guest in, I think it was the last episode, or the one before that, for like two or three thousand sovereigns. Yeah, that, that was a lot of money. Words in the Wind, Literature for the Avid Horizon. Those who remain at the Avid Horizon are desperate for diversion, distraction, or escape. The authorities will pay for three consignments do, 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 to keep their charges content. The planetary romances of the turbulent fabulist are notably popular among the denizens of the Horizon, as is Botherbridge's a, a Tour of Heaven. An amateur engineer gratefully offers to repair your engine before you depart. A thank you. That is a fantastic extra bonus. Let's buy all these bargain armaments. All right, let's let the courtier through. Let's pardon them. Oh, right. I can also take tea. Costs a bit of money, and I think it gives you like a random terror reduction. That time it gave us 2%. That's terrible. That time it gave us like 1%. I'm going to stop doing that. Speak to the prudent observer. Have I spoken with you before? Once a brilliant astronomer of the Royal Society now consigned here in his dotage, he watches the gate. I don't think I could speak with him before. He smiles benignly and invites you to join him on the observation deck, on a veranda at the very top of the manor. It's reached via a makeshift elevator, a rickety wicker basket attached to a pulley. The ascent is slow, jerky, and uncomfortably intimate, but the prudent observer does share his humbugs. Out on the veranda, where the fog is thick, the prudent observer tells you of mysterious activity at the gate, of fires, fires out burning on the statues, of chanting when the wind is still. No one emerges from the gate anymore, and no one who enters the gate from this side ever returns. Return 50 day, 15 days to see more. Gain five terror and a savage secret. Let's deal with the probator's request. So I'm going to decide in favor of the courtier. Her eyes widen as you announce your decision. She bounces from her seat to embrace you. For the second time in my life, Captain, I'm willing to say... What? What is that word? It's three letters and it's considered a bad word? S sad? S what? Oh, sod! Right! Sod decorum. This is British English. The aristocrat pales and fixes you with a gaze as murderous as any dark and midnight hag. The nun merely lights up again. The acting senior probator thanks you profusely before handing the former courtier her imperial pardon. Gain a cryptic benefactor. Glad to help. 500 sovereigns. Nice. I wasn't expecting to get paid. Let's take D one more time. 3%. All right. Yeah, God, that is... That's getting really expensive. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return... I think I'm going to head back to the quiet sea in the Avid Horizon.